Hi everyone, uh, it's Erin Kokinda from Wakefield. We're just gonna give another minute or so to see if any more people are gonna join us, but thank you for waiting in the waiting room. Muted. For the new people that just joined us the last minute or so, we're just going to give it, I think, till 7.05, and then we'll get everything started. So we're about a minute away. All right, Bill, do you want to get going? 705? Yeah, let's do this. So, <clears throat> so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Renault. I'm the town engineer here in Wakefield. Um, also, Julie Aaron Kokinda, our uh, economic and development coordinator, who does a, is the lead on many of our planning initiatives. Um, but this is one that Aaron and I have tag teamed for the past year or so. So in, in the last year, the town um, actually contracted with um, MAPC to develop a, a townwide bike and ped master plan to help us identify and prioritize locations and corridors for, um, for improvements to improve overall mobility with it throughout the town, multimodal mobility specifically. Um, so Aaron and I have basically been working with MAPC to, to visiting locations, discussing options, um, projects that are in the works and essentially how we can um, start to dovetail these improvements better into our um, our day-to-day -day planning in our long-term um, roadway and other infrastructure improvements. Um, so today what our goal is, is to discuss basically some of the solutions or, or proposals that, that MAPC is recommending. Um, we had a, another public meeting, I wanna say that was what, maybe eight, seven six months ago eight months ago somewhere in that range where we kind of did more of a uh that was that was kind of geared more towards um you know getting input on areas to focus our attention to today is more about discussing really where we see um improvement opportunities and and to basically garner some feedback from you folks see if we've missed anything or um you know see if there are other areas that we may want to um put some energy towards to look at as well so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to um, to MAPC to kind of go through a presentation that discuss essentially the work that's been going on for the last year. Um, and then what we'll do is similar to the last meeting, we'll have a, a breakout session where um, Aaron, myself, and, um, <clears throat> and Jessica and David from MAPC will look at the um, what will host breakout rooms to discuss different portions of the of the um, of the presentation, as well as some other ideas that that you folks may have to incorporate into the final plan. So without further ado, I will turn it over to MAPC to to discuss kind of where we are today um, and, and what we're looking to do going forward.
Oh, Jessica, you're mute. Muted. I just realized. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. My name is Jessica Belanger. I'm with MAPC. I'll tell go over to the next slide. And um, as Bill mentioned, we've been working for the past year with the town of Wakefield on a bike and pedestrian plan. I am a transportation planner with MAPC, and I'm joined with my colleague, David. Do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself? I'll be off guard. Yes, David Lossenheiser. <laughs> Talk to you in a minute. All yours, Jessica. <laughs> Thanks. And then this is our agenda for this evening. We'll start off by providing a project overview. We'll go over our existing conditions. We'll talk a little bit about the community engagement aspects of this, pro this plan. We'll provide our key recommendations, and then we'll finish up with a project action plan. After we provide the action plan, we'll break off into our breakout rooms. And at that time, we'll really be asking for feedback on the plan we shared today with you all. So for the project background, we want this project to really build upon the existing complete streets policy that Wakefield has established. We want to establish a comprehensive network for bike travel within the town, and we want to establish an action plan for implementation. So after the plan is completed, we'd like to clarify the steps that the town can take to continue these efforts. First, we're going to look at the existing conditions. Many of you are probably familiar with the side of the lake. Um, we started off by looking at population density. We looked at users that are 65 or older. We looked at folks that are under the age of 18 and also persons with disabilities. We evaluated the sidewalk inventory. We looked at the roadway classifications, the mass stop crash data, and also reviewed the network connectivity. There's some existing infrastructure challenges in Wakefield. Some of them are the lack of bike lanes, a section of the rail trail that's still under construction, there's a slightly narrow path around some portions of the lake, and then the footpath network at the Brown Park and also the town forest. During this study, there were several other initiatives taking place in Wakefield. The main one is the Envision Wakefield Plan. That's the downtown revitalization. Um, the Wakefield to Linfield Rail Show project that David works very closely on. We have the Wakefield Master Plan that's also being um, underway with MAPC. The MBTA is in the process of doing a bus network redesign, which impacts some of the bus routes in your community. And then we also met with the folks at MassDOT that organized the Safe Routes to School program. And recently, Wakefield did us participated in the Safe Routes to Schools, where they actually looked at transportation for students to and from your local schools. As part of our, commun our community engagement efforts, we began by conducting a survey. We did a few site visits in town, walked around the lake and some areas in town that were of concern. We've contacted Safe Streets Working Group, the Traffic Advisory Commission. We've worked with Friends of Lake Quantapowit. We've also participated in meetings with the Safe Routes to School and some other public meetings to gain further information on the conditions in Wakefield. So one of the early findings from our survey were the barriers to walking in your community. And there was a keen desire to have better connection to Braycart Reservation as well as town, the town forest, a request for wider footpaths around the lake. There was an acknowledgement of missing sidewalks or poor sidewalk conditions. And then some of the respondents to the survey mentioned that there's a lot of dogs in the, around the lake and also dog walkers sometimes. When we asked um, survey respondents what their concerns were when cycling in Wakefield, they cited too much traffic, aggressive drivers, built or incomplete to the rail trail, poor road conditions, no bike lanes, and then the angled parking in downtown on Main Street. There's a series of ongoing funding pro programs that are available to Wakefield, and we've taken advantage of many of these, um, but they're, most of them are listed here. So the funding opportunities listed here are often used to focus on infrastructure improvements that benefit cyclists and also walkers. Municipalities are encouraged to evaluate their programs and participate in many of these. So it's nice to see that the town has really taken these to heart and they've started applying for a lot of these grants to get some of this work done. As part of that project action plan, we're gonna finish up by reviewing the completed projects. We're gonna discuss the projects in design or under construction. 
we're going to review our recommendations for bike lanes and then also our recommendations for segments along the Wakefield corridors. I'll turn it over to David. Okay, uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, first, we'll just go over some of the recently completed project that that Bill and his team and Aaron at, at Wakefield have, have worked on. Uh, number one, uh, Greenwood and, and, and Main Street, putting in uh, curb extensions and uh, sidewalks and upgrading that infrastructure. A floor away, which is runs along the south side of the lake, uh, that did some repaving of the path there, particularly the sloped area that's subject to some washouts. And, during, during rain and so forth, and improving that and making it more accessible. Uh, Albion Street, which the photos show, you know, before the final striping, um, installing again, new curb, curb extensions, landscaping, new sidewalks and so forth. Um, and then Lowell and, and Salem Street, which had new crosswalk and, and sidewalk uh, and narrowing the, the, uh, the cross section. It looks like that's awarded for construction. We'll go to construction very shortly. Um, at the last, at our last meeting a few months ago that Bill alluded to, one of the key needs or concerns in town in terms of, of needs of intersection improvements was Oak, Greenwood, and Green Street. And so, you know, as part of that, some of the concerns that were brought up in, in, in that meeting and, and subsequently, um, you know, the town has started to look at what the potential design would be for that intersection and actually so we're already seeing some, some of the results of some of our work on the plan. Uh, so just to give you an example of where things are right now, the current condition of the roadway right now, you have very long crossings for pedestrians at this location. Uh, you have pretty wide open uh, areas of asphalt that, that are much wider than are needed to provide the flow of traffic. Um, and so the, the design at the right is, is the latest design. I know they're still, still working on it, so it's not a final plan but it gives you a general idea of what can be done at that intersection to clarify traffic, to provide much shorter crossings for pedestrians, much clearer crossings, and also provide some extra potential green space, could be landscaping or some other use to, to provide, to, to beautify the roadway and, and make it you know, safer and more pleasant for everyone uh, on the roadway. So that's just an example of a project that's in progress. Um, and I just want to go over some of the key sort of needs for, for pedestrians uh, and, and cyclists uh, in, the, in, in the plan. Uh, number one, um, obviously completing the sidewalk network on major streets. You know, fortunately, compared to some of the towns we work in in the region, Wakefield has a, you know, most of the streets have sidewalks, not all the streets. And we'll mention that, um, you know, in a bit. The, you know, the maintenance is always an issue though, you know, fixing curb ramps and crosswalks and that sort of thing. We wanna use curb extensions, which actually in places where there's parallel parking to narrow the sidewalk. So it's, it's, it's a shorter crossing for, for folks uh, and provides more visibility at, at the crossings. Um, you know, in terms of the signal timing, concurrent means that you're, you have a, you know, you're, 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 you're you're walking at the same time that, that, that vehicles are having the green that allows for a much shorter wait time than waiting for a separate cycle for, for walking. Uh, median refuge islands are, are, are highly recommended or possible, um, which the photo does not have. It's a median refuge island. It's, a, it's an island in the middle of the street. So it allows the pedestrian to cross half the street and wait if they need to crossing uh, the other half. So, um, this is a map of the sidewalk uh, inventory. Um, and in particular, we see, you know, in the circled areas, uh, New Salem Street here and Forest Street are particular streets that do not have sidewalks on either side of the street. Uh, those in red have no sidewalks. Those in orange have a sidewalk on one side of the street and those streets in green have sidewalks on both sides of the street. Uh, Forest Street's a particular challenge with the topography, especially close to the track, so that would, be some design concerns there. Uh, Hemlock Road, which is um, a DCR roadway. And, and I understand there's, there's a school redevelopment there. So that, that may address, should address some of those issues. And a list of some of the other uh, streets, you know, North Ave. Uh, you know, I, I, our goal, our, our, our sort of 
recommendations in the plan are that really all arterial streets um, in, in town, uh, essentially any street with a, with a double yellow line in particular, just a, a sort of a rule of thumb, should have sidewalks on both sides of the street. And you know, one is better than none and two are better than two sides are better than one side. It, it's a process. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, the, the, the town can't do everything at once. So, you know, it, it's ensuring that as projects come up that, that that's considered and, and sidewalks are put in also, you know, allowing, having the developers, you know, do as much of the, the sidewalk work as part of the, the development itself. Um, uh, needs for cyclists, um, you know, a bicycle lane network, uh, protected bike lanes where possible, minimizing angled parking, as was noted in the survey, uh, back in parking as preferred over the standard forward parking, uh, connecting to the existing trail networks, and of course, safe access to the key destinations. And the photo, which is located in Brookline, shows some of the sort of key elements that we like in terms of design of, of um, you know, of, of, of streets. You know, for example, we have a protected bike lane on the left, which is separated, you know, from, from the, the street by a curb. Uh, we have on the opposite side, a, a standard bike lane, which is sometimes used. Uh, we have a raised speed table or raised intersection here. So drivers come up a slight ramp to cross and it provides a slower crossing. Uh, ladder crosswalk design, we really encourage a crosswalk design that this, that's not parallel lines, but actually a ladder or, or thicker bars that are reflective and, and, and very clear where the, where the crossing is. Um, you know, good sidewalks, nice landscaping where possible and so forth. So those are some of the elements of design that that we encourage, you know, where possible. Um, you know, schematic here of, of a protected bike lane versus uh, standard bike lanes. As I'll mention in a bit, you know, Wakefield, some of the streets are, rights of ways are narrow, so we may not be able to get the protected bike lanes on the street, but there's there's plenty of opportunities for standard, we say conventional bike lanes uh, next, next to the curb or next to the sidewalk. Um, so this is a map of streets that we've identified as having the potential for bike lanes or the width or the potential. So protected bike lanes, uh, the downtown main street that's already been, it's already in the design for the, for the downtown region. Um, uh, main street around Round Park vicinity, uh, there's an opportunity there to, to have parking on one side of the street and have you know, perhaps a two-way protected bike lane uh, on the other side of the street. <clears throat> also Farm Street, is quite wide, I think, for, for a good portion of it. <clears throat> so there's the potential there for protected bike lanes. Give it the two high schools and a, I think it's a middle or elementary school, apologize. Uh, another school there. So three schools right there. So providing access to the schools is very important. And, and then the, the list of the other streets where we see potential for conventional bike lanes. Uh, some of the streets can be restriped as they're currently paved. They're wide enough, basically, if they're 30 feet wide, we can put in a bike lane and and, and restripe it uh, to do that. And some other cases, you know, looking at, I think at Salem Street or some of the other streets that the town's looking at reconstructing in a year or two or three. And, and, and in that process, you know, putting in the, the bike infrastructure as part of that process. Um, we're also focused at MAPC on what we call regional networks or regional uh, greenway corridors. Uh, the regional greenway corridors are sorry, are the highest level or the most, um, that provide that sort of the, it's kind of like the interstate highway system of the, of the highway system, you know, in, in, in the sense that it provides that connectivity uh, and, and high quality networks between locations. So our main sort of corridors that we have are, are Lake Guadalajara, obviously, and improving the conditions around the lake, which we'll talk about in a minute. The second is what we've called the Mystic Highlands Greenway, which connects, um, you know, Stoneham, Reading and Melrose. And, and of course the rail trail is another, and then you know, connecting over to Breakheart Reservation. And, and this is the Mystic Island Greenway. So um, the Wakefield Rail Trail, as I think many of you know, this, this is the start of, you know, it terminates in the downtown, but this rail trail corridor will eventually go to Portland, Maine. Um, you know, there's a good portion of it that's completed north of you know, north of what was called the border of the Boston Trail, uh, you know, from, from basically Danvers to the north, um, almost to Newburyport. We've got a section from Newburyport 
to the state line that's complete. New Hampshire's working on their trail, and so you know, it'll it'll be a, a you know a, a, you know a quarter all the way. And so the Mystic Highlands Greenway is is taking it from from this point and primarily on residential streets, but also on some of the major streets to provide a nice quality uh, bikeable walkable corridor from the terminus of, of the rail trail over one to Stoneham over this way um, to the Stoneham to the rail track community bike way there and then down to Malden and the whole trail system that that starts at the Malden River and that's downtown just south of downtown Malden connects to the Mystic River to Boston and so forth so that's that's what the Mystic Highlands Greenway is we are having a ride on the Greenway next Wednesday that's Wednesday the 20th, I think, um, starting at 3.30 at Malden Station. And this will be our first organized ride. Uh, Senator Lewis and Representative Lipper Garabinian will, will be joining us at least at the beginning or a part of the ride, and, and as well as a number of officials and, and advocates and so forth, and hope you all can join us for that. Um, again, that's 3.30 uh, next Wednesday at Malden uh, Station on the east side of the station, downtown side of the station and we'll be riding the, the entire Greenway and, and talking about it and so forth. So this is a picture in Melrose of a section of what they've marked and that will be part of the, we propose to be part of the Greenway. And this is a typical sort of condition on a residential street. It would not change much the residential street itself, but it just provided a place for shared, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a shared space and putting in bike shared, shared lane markings and, and so forth to, to you know, aware, make aware that people will be using this corridor on lower traffic streets. Um, this is uh, Main Street by Round Park. And this is a proposal that we've put together that could be an example of what could be done. The street's fairly wide, the parking is fairly minimal. There's only a need for parking on one side of the street. So what we would do is take the street here and narrow uh, the travel lanes and put in a two-way a bike lane or bike corridor on one side of the street. And of course the sidewalk or we, or we could widen the sidewalk significantly and make a two-way path on one side of the street that way. So there's different ways to do it, but, but essentially the point we're trying to make is that there's space on the roadway to actually create a nice two-way path of some sort along the street. The second or the other priority is, is really Lake Quattapowit. And that's something that's come up. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, really nice walking corridor that people use. And so our various proposals here are to create a much better Lake Quanah Pallet um, and create, you know, our, our goal as we state in the plan is to create a continuous 12 foot wide shared use path around uh, the lake that would provide space for people to walk next to each other and also pass the people perhaps walking in the opposite direction. Um, you don't have to jump into the roadway or onto the grass to, 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 to pass people. Um, you know, some examples of, of the walkway. Uh, so North Avenue, um, this is one of the corridors that we're looking at. So the current configuration right now, this is actually a wider section of the sidewalk on the south end of North Ave, but what the sidewalk does this narrow a bit and the street narrows a bit uh, farther north. So the, the design at the bottom is to narrow significantly North Avenue. Uh, right now, North Avenue is much wider than it needs to be for two lanes of traffic. So we can take some of that space and create a nice wide mixed use path. Um, power lines would be moved over to the buffer space here and then create a nice a wide path for people to, uh, to use. On the north side of Quantapout Parkway, I think there's work as part of the development that's going in there to, to, to make path improvements along that section. So that's already um, in the works or in the planning. And then on Main Street, this is the sort of the other part of the lake. Uh, as you could see from these photos, uh, people are not able to all walk on the sidewalk. And I think that's no surprise and many of you know that. Um, so we looked at several options for how can we create more space? And as you can see in the top picture, we cannot go further into the lake. We have to look at where can we get space. Um, on the other side. So the options are one, create a one-way main street or two, remove parking. And so we're recommending that we remove parking on this section, you know, as part of Envision Wakefield plan, they will be increasing parking at the south end of the lake. So encouraging 
you know, as you know, there's always parking in the downtown area, encouraging people to be closer to downtown to park and support the businesses as well after you after you do your walk or run or take your dog around. Um, so just as an example, so this is on the left image is the current condition. Uh, we have a parking lane, you have travel lanes and a space, and you have uh, a pretty narrow sidewalk at that point on the lake. And so on the right is an example of how we potentially reconfigure uh, the lake. And, and so we have, by narrowing this, by limiting the parking, narrowing the street significantly, we'd have room for a bike lane on the north side of the north, northbound direction. Uh, also, um, part of the recommendations to complete the sidewalk network, the sidewalks are not continuous all the way up the east side of uh, Main Street there. So continuing uh, improving or completing the sidewalk network and then creating a much wider path on, on, on the other side. Um, so, you know, other things, consider establishing a bicycle committee, um, you know, implementing the plan. And, and as part of the committee charge would be to really review or work with the town on all the, the this roadway projects to provide input um, and, and help with, with the design of, of projects and provide the feedback and provide that you know, feedback loop that helps to make the projects a better project. Um, with that, uh, let me stop here. And uh, I think what we're going to do now is open it up to uh, some brief questions before we go to break out. If people have big picture questions about the plan, if you could you know, use your raise your hand function. And I think I think Aaron or Bill will. Yeah, so we don't have the chat, but we do have the raise hand. Uh, so I see uh, we have Judy Ro Romano has her hand raised. Judy, if you want to unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm a frequent rider of my bike around town in the lake and I didn't, uh, one of the severe bottlenecks is the area across from the gingerbread construction company in Cumberland Farms. And I don't see an opportunity there to widen uh, the path unless you build a bridge over the, that part of the lake. Is that part of the plan? Well, we looked at that section as, as I understand again, removing the parking there would allow space to widen the path. What uh, parking on that. is that? The, this is this is on, on Main Street, come up north end of the lake, right? On Main Street, right? There's no parking there, not at the place you, I'm talking about. If you sing on Lowell, I, I don't know, it's across from the construction company and Cumberland Farms. It's um, you know quite a busy intersection and people coming in and out of those two businesses and there's a sidewalk and there's a railing um, protecting people from the lake but I don't see how that can that particular bottleneck can be remediated without a bridge which might be a really cool thing to add there. Well, thank you. We'll take a further look at that. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Oops. Yeah, because you have a turn lane there. Yeah. Um, thank you, Judy. Um, I think next I saw was Marlene. Hi, I live at 598 North Ave. Uh, other than the desperate need for a crosswalk for 598 and 600, since there are a lot of us that walk the lake and take our lives into our hands to get across North Ave. The second thing is, it is our understanding that the developer of those two buildings set money aside that the town is holding for sidewalks. The building 600 is almost four years old. My building is two years old. I'd like to know the status of that. I mean, he claims the money is there and the town of Wakefield has it. I, I can take that one. Yeah, we, we, do have the, we do have the developer contributions for both of those. And our game plan is to include it when we reconstruct um, the path on North Ave to do it as one project together. And our also intent is to have a crossing that'll have a, uh, a rapid um, uh, retroflected beacon to enhance the crossing. So my goal is to try to have it all done as um, they start up the 40B project, you know, in the next couple of years. 
and um, we have grant money for the path on North Ave currently as well. So um, it's in the works. Let's, th that's what I would tell you at this point. So I'd say within the next two years, you'll see that that all done. Thank you. Okay. I just want to add to that a recommendation that I did not mention, and that is uh, Reading is very interested in and in being connected to the lake as well. Um, and North Ave and it becomes Walker's Brook in Reading. And there's interest in creating a path under uh, 93. And that would require either narrowing the four travel lanes uh, that are there because the sidewalk under the, the roadway is quite narrow or eliminating a travel lane in that section. So that's a recommendation to create a much better path that runs under the underpass and then connects to the North Ave path system in the lake. All right, thank you, Marlene. Um, next, I see Patrick with his hand raised. Patrick? Uh, Patrick, Pro sorry if I say your name, uh, Proyak? You wanna unmute yourself? Oh, no, okay. Uh, next up, I see we have Cindy Schatz. Oh, you're uh, muted. Okay, <clears throat> You're muted. There you go. Okay. You're good now. now I'm good. Okay. Um, question about the, the recommended parking on Main Street between Lowell and Salem Streets <clears throat> or Lowell and Church Streets. I'm not understanding whether the recommendation is to take out all parking the whole way down or just part of the way down because there are a significant number of activities that take place down on the common that really require parking along Main Street there because there's not enough parking south of Lowell and Church Streets to accommodate the activities that happen on the common. Well, I, I would, in some ways, I would kick that back to you as a news in the town. What's more important, having a wider path or having parking for, for every event? And, and I, I think there are some places along the lake where uh, particularly in the southern part of the lake, where there is there's a significant grassy space next to the lake, and so there may be an opportunity to widen the path toward the lake. But I would say north of Aborn, Aborn White, even White Avenue, you know, the, you would have to eliminate the parking there. But I think south of roughly White Avenue, there, there may be an opportunity to widen the path uh, closer to the lake and and, and not, you know, you know less parking could be taken I, I, you know well, th those... some of the activities that take place there <clears throat> are fundraisers such as the festival by the lake which was a major fun which is the fundraising activity for the wakefield center neighborhood association and if there's not park vendors are not going to come because customers will not come because they cannot park there and if vendors and customers don't come then the organization which works on beautiful the downtown, they maintain the bandstand, they, be, they maintain the railings around the common, then they don't have the money to do those activities. So that, um, that parking between Salem Street, Church Street going north, um, you know, not, not as far as Cordes Street, but up a significant amount is very important to town activities. Yeah, right, so but I, I think, again, you have to consider the trade-offs of do, do you accommodate parking for a couple important events a year, or do you provide a 24-7 nice, acceptable path for people to use? And, and again, that's something, you know, we're, we're making that recommendation, but obviously a town process will have to look at, you know, those, those specifics of parking. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just encourage that we look at the big picture of you know, the goal of creating, you know, a good path. And, and if you have a create a good path, then, then you, maybe you can reduce the demand for parking if people have a better way to get there by foot and bike. Yeah, um, that's what I was going to say, just to add on to David's point is that if it's easier for folks to walk, they might choose to leave their car at home. And if it's a local event and there's many people that are coming from within Wakefield, they might consider riding a bike or walking over to the lake for the event rather than using a car. It's just something to consider. There are some things you can't carry back by bike though. If you are if you're going there and you're buying art, you cannot bring it back on your bike. It's something to consider. And we often do par yes. parking studies to evaluate what the impact is of removing the parking, how it's being used. So 
it's something to think about and there'll always be trade-offs, but thank you for your perspective. It's just helpful. Yeah, and Cindy, I think for, you know, I'm not speaking for the town, but it might be something, you know, events, um, you, there can be accommodations of finding other places, you know, they drop off and things like that. But um, yeah, but I think it's a great point to bring up. And Aaron, I just noticed Carol Mann has her hand up. I hope you can call on her. Hi, um, I would just like to um, talk about what Judy also talked about around the gingerbread construction company. I too ride my bicycle several times a week. And at the corner of Main Street where Lowell goes straight and Main Street goes off to the right, is that what you were talking about, Judy? That section? That's the one, yes. Okay, so like you, you know, I feel like I take my life in my hands every day when I go around that corner because sometimes the cars don't let you go. Most of the time they do but sometimes they push you over to the right and they come around the corner, they don't wanna wait. So that is one of the areas that I think really needs to be addressed also. I think your bridge idea is a great idea. Um, the other thing is I noticed on the plan, it seems like the bike lane would be going in the opposite direction, not on the lake side, but on the opposite side of Main Street. And most people don't ride that way. Most people ride around the lake, oh, keeping our lake on the right. So um, I, I really have never ridden the opposite way around the lake. And I think that when you get to say the 128 rotary, that would be a challenge if you're going that way and not the other way, keeping the lake on your right. So something to consider. Um, thank you. Two points I would make in front of, I just looked at the width of the roadway in front of Cumberland Farms. And right now you have two lanes and a, and a turn lane and you've got, the width is quite excessive. So you actually have probably 10 extra feet of space that you could keep all three of those lanes and narrow that roadway. So you have, you have plenty of space there in that roadway to create a, a wider section and to make it safer to cross and so forth. So there's plenty of space of the roadway to narrow the roadway without changing the, the, the function of the road uh, to do that. In terms of the northbound bike lane, the idea is not just to go around the lake, but it's to, as we understand the, the, the prevailing space you know, direction around the lake is clockwise. And so if you, if you keep the cycle, the, the cyclists, you know, on the other side of the, on the roadway going northbound that they, they will not cross over and go to the lake or minimize cr cyclists crossing over going to the lake in the northbound or opposite direction of, of prevailing flow of traffic. So that that's the intent of putting the bike lane on the north side and also create a way to get, you know, other places beside the lake. Okay. So once you get past the lake heading north, where do you go? Because there are is that enormous rotary and all of the cars that are heading on to 95, 128 are going that direction. So where do you go from there? I, I ride through Linfield, I ride through Reading. I come around usually from the Reading side and come under, um, I go past Cumberland Farms in Reading and cross 128 at a crosswalk and stay on the sidewalk and go underneath um, the overpass and then the lakes on my right. I can't envision myself going the opposite way and dealing with the traffic that's heading on to 128 from that direction. Our recommendation is that right at past Cumberland Farms that cyclists uh, veer off onto where Main Street dead ends. Um, at the end of the dead end there, there's a sidewalk that connects to the, the circle that goes under the highway and you just stay on the sidewalk on the crosswalk and that'll take you out. But once you get past the circle on Haverhill street, that, that street does have a bike lane up through, through, through Reading in that direction. And you're right. It's not, it's, it's not a comfortable place to be. And there's the sidewalk. Um, but, but that's what we have at the moment. So. Okay. And um, the other thing is, I understand about Cumberland Farms, the road's wide there, but then when you make, when you bear to the right to stay on Main Street, it's one lane that goes to the right and then the left lane goes towards Lowell Street. It's that one little curve that's the dangerous curve. Um, it's a dedicated, just one lane and it's really not that wide. It goes around to the right so that you stay on the right going to the lake. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, the 
the spot where Judy has a problem also. It's not really the Cumberland Farms because that's wide right there. But then as you go to stay on Main Street heading off to the right, it's a dedicated right turn only lane and that's the one that's narrow. So, so if I can chime in, um, so Bill Renault, town engineer, just um, to give you a heads up, we also received some, some developer contribution money from the 200 Quinnipowit development. And uh, our intent was to look at at least the crossings over there to have some enhancement. But I mean, all the feedback that I'm hearing here is, you know, to, to take a deeper dive into that intersection, which I, I think totally makes sense. And it's something that, you know, we're happy to do. So, uh, you know, I think that this is gr great feedback and, and something that we can definitely target as a, as a, a area for improvement within the plan. Thank you. I'm going to go to Kate. Uh, you, the things are kind of moving around, but I, she was next on my list. Um, Kate, are you there? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually Cora, Kate and I'm her mom. And we're <laughs> both, uh, we live in the Greenwood neighborhood in the south end of town. And um, we, on Renwick Road, the, the traffic that comes down, um, what is um, street? Uh, I can't think of, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the traffic coming down the road. Yeah, from Stoneham into into um, uh, Melrose and heading basically instead of instead of turning um, left on Main Street to get north, they because they're on the stone coming from the Stoneham side, they turn up onto Renwick Road and then uh, you know cut basically cut the corner to get to Main Street into into Greenwood. Um, and so we get a lot of really fast traffic on our road for a small, you know, segment of road. Um, and it's a wide street. It's very generous down here. Uh, and there are portions of it that have sidewalk, but a key portion of it that goes around the corner and, and meets Main Street um, where the bus stop is, where the, the commuter bus stop is, doesn't have sidewalk. Um, so that's a, a challenge here, and we have a lot of young families in this neighborhood that just can't walk there, you know, can't can't push their strollers, uh, and and we've got really fast speeders that this has been like this for a long time, and so it's it's a concern, and I think physically we have the space to make um, the sidewalks in in this neighborhood, but we'd love to see that get uh, examined. Thank you. I uh, appreciate your feedback. Uh, I don't know if anyone on our team has anything to add to that or we'll just make note of it. I think we make note of it. We can definitely include it. Great. Um, next I'm seeing on my list is Ashley. If you want to unmute yourself, Ashley, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can yes, hear you. Yes, yes, sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, so I basically live, I live on Hopkins Street. It's basically on the Reading Wakefield border and Stoneham's like right there. Um, are there any plans to connect? So right next to us, there's um, a new apartment complex that's being built on Tarrant Lane. Um, are there plans to connect um, Hopkins Street to downtown with like a sidewalk or a bike path or anything like that? Because right now there's no sidewalk over the overpass that goes um, over the highway. It's just um, pretty much like a blind corner, no sidewalk. It's pretty dangerous when I go out for runs and whatnot. Uh, at this point, there's not. It wasn't included as part of the recommendations for the 40B when that went in. Um, they did evaluate it, but there's some topographical challenges with trying to make that work. And that was why it wasn't included. It was my understanding. It was right around the time when I started in Wakefield. Um, so I can tell you that's not in the queue right now, but it's if, if that's something that we need to be looking at, we can in the future. But at this point, that wasn't something that was on our plan. Okay, yeah, I'd be appreciated. It's just very hard running up that road because it's a blind corner. It's many cars just speed around that corner and don't see me and swerve at the last minute. So um, other than that, like basically, if, since that's the case, normally if I run later in the day, I... I opt to go towards Reading as opposed to Wakefield when I run just because of how dangerous it is. But other than that, um, 
Are there any plans to connect the bike path to the tri community bike path that's um in I think Stoneham and Woburn and whatnot? Yeah, that's part of the what we call the Mystic Highlands Greenway, and and our proposed route is uh, uh, residential streets. I showed in one of the slides uh, of, of that route, but it's essentially uh, sort of zigzagging up the hill. Um, I think it's Chestnut Street and um, Cedar Street, Gold Street, um, Byron, I could be getting it wrong, Jordan, Fox. Yeah, so, so some of those streets are parallel Albion Street, but roughly, but it sort of zigzag up and into uh, connecting into Stoneham and then through the cemetery in Stoneham and then down through um, Palmworth Field and into the Greenway there in, in Stoneham. Okay. And, and so at some point we, we'd have to do a signage plan to sort of create, create you know, a route or wayfinding uh, as part of that to mark it. But it'll be no changes in the street itself, but just other than signage and more awareness yeah. that be people on the street. Absolutely. Can, are you talking more connecting to like the paths that they have in the tri county? I, you know, I think part of our plan is more using the roadways we have. Yeah, I was wondering if you were actually going to like link up the path so it could be like one giant like bike path. <laughs> no, because there's no place yeah. to put a path, which is why okay. we're using the, the residential streets. There's just not the space anyway. So. Okay. Um, lastly, there's no crosswalk across like Prospect Street. So if I were to like run up into like Bear Hill onto High Street um, to access the tri-community bike path, I was wondering if there were plans to put a crosswalk anywhere along Prospect at all. I think, Bill, if, uh, I mean, it's something um, that's kind of my neck of the woods. Um, I know going down the hill, that might be kind of dangerous going into Wakefield, putting a crosswalk, but I don't know what we currently have going more towards uh, the prospect side, going towards Stoneham. Um, well, well, we have one at the intersection. Okay, I thought there was one. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, typically we try to avoid mid-block crosswalks for the most part, but if there's a location, we typically evaluate those as part of the traffic advisory committee too. So as we get requests for traffic conning, or if we get requests for new new crosswalks in different locations, we evaluate it through that process, um, which is through the police and um, myself and a bunch of other folks that all sit on a committee together to evaluate those locations. Okay. Um, I think that's it then. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. Um, next, I have David Miller. Yeah, um, just not my main point, but I, I wanted to say something about Prospect Street. It seems like um, maybe the town of Stoneham, I don't know if we coordinate with the town of Stoneham, but the the whole area of Prospect Street or what it, I think it becomes north or something in Stoneham near Bear Hill Country Club is extremely dangerous, but a lot of people walk that. And I'm wondering if we coordinate with Stoneham that is ripe for some uh, sidewalks and cross um, crosswalks, that whole area from uh, Main Street and Stoneham down to Bear Hill. But anyway, that's not my main point. Um, I'm just, it, it is a question though. Do we coordinate what we're doing with what uh, Stoneham is doing? Uh, with Stoneham specifically right now, we're not. Um, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't. We're doing something with, we're actually talking about some work on Parker Road with a sidewalk and an extension into Reading. So um, we're dealing with the Reading folks over there, the engineers there. So, you know, we do coordinate on projects when it makes sense. So, I mean, okay. honestly, just you're, you're highlighting a, a project. That, yeah. yeah, that that area of the, whatever prospect becomes when it goes into, um, into Stoneham, the area from um, the uh, country club to uh, Main Street and Stoneham is extremely dangerous, but I know a lot of people walk that. Uh, okay. So anyway, and but my main point is going back to something I think it was Cindy was talking about, the parking along Main Street um, near or adjacent to the lake. Um, I'm all definitely all for eliminating parking there. I was trying to bike today and people fill up that uh, that area in the bike lane for with parking and it's it's really difficult to bike along Main Street. But I'm wondering to address Cindy's concerns, are we again a, 
the question of coordination. Are we coordinating with the need for additional parking for the downtown region? If we eliminate all the parking along Main Street, you know, next to the lake, are we building additional public or public parking? You know, the, the public parking available in the downtown area is pretty um, abysmal, I think. Um, we have that one little lot, um, what is it off Princess or I forget, I think so, um, near the police station. But um, it seems to me there's a lot of, I guess I don't know for sure, but there's there might be additional um, land available for a public parking space and near the New Salem corridors. I, I don't know, but our, is 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 coordinating parking, public parking, a public off street public parking lot, part of the plan with the uh, coordinating with the bike and pedestrian uh, plan? So our, our as we take away parking, are we are we going to um, think about adding parking somewhere else? That's okay. All right. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I follow you. So, so let's say, I, I think I look at this in a couple different ways. So we have the Envision project for downtown that's going on now. There's been discussion about how that would all work with parking. And we've looked at, you know, essentially ways to kind of shift parking around. So that, that definitely was part of, of that discussion. Um, specifically on Main Street, we also were looking, you know, more on, on Common Street to add parking. So we made that one way and re recently had changed that within the last year. Um, that was part of the Envision, you know, uh, concepts, I would say. And then there were um, plans to also look at adding more parking at the, at the town hall and kind of, you know, have an angled parking that would allow you to go in or, a, or even a perpendicular parking that would allow you to stack more cars up. So th there are some discussions on that. But the, the other piece, I, I, and I think that it kind of alludes to what, what David was saying, um, talks about, you know, the elimination of parking, if it's for these events that we're talking about, there's nothing that says that we can't use, you know, we can design the bike lane accordingly to allow, you know, a removal of a, of a, a bollard or whatever it may be to allow parking in a specific time for one event or so, or block a lane off and, you know, only have traffic going in one direction that allows that to, to, you know, still gain the same amount of parking we had, but just a different traffic movement or so. So there, I think there are a lot of other options. So it's not like an either or all the time. And I think that's something to just to keep in mind that, you know, we, if we were to go this route and the, in the town supported, you know, really enhancing the, the bike, um, you know, the, the bike accommodations within the stretch, you know, it, but we still have to find ways to to accommodate, you know, the, these larger events. I mean, they're not they're not as frequent as you think. I mean, we have them for sure, but it's not an every weekend thing necessarily. And it's not a it's not something that we can't you know find solutions to. And I think that if we're going to propose it, we would have other solutions, you know, creative ones to make sure that we get the utility out of the bike lane that we want as a community, if that's what the community wants. And you know, still provide the other parking for those bigger events that we need to have. So th there, I think there are solutions. If you know, before you know, any design is done, I highly recommend a parking study downtown that looks at actual occupancy of parking at different times of the day. That's something we have certainly done in other communities, and and almost universally, we found that every community, you know, even at the peak of parking, it's you know only 70, 80 percent occupied in the downtown area of parking. So there's always parking somewhere. You may go two more blocks farther away to, to find it, but <laughs> but it's rarely a, 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 an issue of capacity. It's just understanding where it is and, and that there, there is the capacity, but it may not be, you know, as close, but it's there. So, but the data yeah. needs to be generated to identify what, you know, identify what the situation really is so, and, and specifically for downtown we did do that as part of the envision yeah. project so that was okay. discussed and, and we looked at the occupancy versus the availability and all of that so the demand management component of it so that I mean, was it, yeah it just it just seems like the downtown area of wakefield is evolving into you know a fairly nice restaurant area but it i mean i've I have had trouble finding parking place within a reasonable walking distance, and the the 
it seems like the uh, the lots uh, off of Princess Street, Princess Street, and others are usually full. And you know, yet you drive around a while. I know this is maybe this isn't the topic of tonight's discussion, but since we, it seems like all of this needs to be planned in 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 some coordinated fashion. And I'm wondering if, you know, when I go into Lexington, for instance, just as a comparative example, they. Lexington has a very large public parking off street lot, and we don't have anything comparable. I'm just wondering if that's part of the plan. Uh, maybe that's my final statement on that. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, Bill. Well, you, you, Aaron, you can go. You can, you can no, go. No, I was just going to say that was a, a point of conversation before I think Bill and I were here. Maybe Bill yeah. was here about having a public parking garage. Um, yeah. It didn't go through, um, I don't know, through the Envision Wakefield. Um, Bill can speak more to that, but um, I think that's been brought to our attention a few times. Um, but Bill, I don't know if you want to add any more. Yeah, I, I, well, without kind of, I, I think we can go on a tangent and talk about the Envision project for another hour. I don't think that we yeah. want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, maybe we table that conversation about it, but I mean, um, David, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, you can get my info on the website and um, hit me up. I can go into more detail on the parking and some of those discussions. Okay, that's that, fine. that might make a Thank little you. bit, just to save uh, everyone's time here, so. Right, thank you. Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I just wanna um, do kind of a time check. It's eight o'clock, our agenda did call to have breakout sessions for about 25 minutes or so, starting 15 minutes ago, but these comments and discussions are great. Um, so I think we're just gonna move forward, we keep doing these questions. And if we have time at the end, we'll do shorter breakout sessions. I hope that's okay with everyone. I, I don't know how to ask everyone <laughs> and get a response, but I think that's how we'll move forward and shake your head if you're okay with that, if you have your screen on. Okay, I'm seeing shaking yeses who, who do have their screen on. All right, thanks everyone. All right, so next on my list, I have John Chrisley from, there you go, John. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for, uh putting together this information session. I really, I, I printed out the plan. It's got a lot of great recommendations in it. Um, I had a, uh, two specific questions and I know uh, Bill and I have talked about this in, a, in an earlier meeting. For the North Ave section, um, I'm looking at the, uh, the figure eight in the plan where they talk about 12 foot travel lanes on the 12 foot sidewalk and like a four foot buffer area. Um, for cyclists going around the north that the north ave you know they're traveling you know 12 to say 18 miles per hour so can we get a, a reconfiguration that includes a bike lane next to the sidewalk there i, I looked at both main street and and north ave and and on main street if you do remove the parking you have space to put a nice 12 foot path and the bike lane on the northbound direction north ave is a little bit narrower uh in terms of the, the space there so there's really not the room to both provide that nice 12 foot um path and also provide a separate bike lane uh in in the street um if you in general i mean there, there there's you know width changes throughout north right. ave but but if you take the travel lanes from 12 feet down to 11 or 11 and a half and well, that buffer area. Well, the, the 12 is, is basically allowing for 24 foot roadway width of which you'd have, you know, 11 foot travel lane and one foot shoulder next to the curb, you know, if you have buses and wide, you know, trucks there. So it, it still has the narrow travel lane. It's just the, the way it's set up. It's, it doesn't show that one foot shoulder space. So you want to have, so a, I think if you, if you go ahead with that, configuration, David, I know I, it seems to me that you're going to have cyclists doing exactly what they're doing now, which is vying for road space with, you know, lots of cars and trucks on that very busy arterial. Yeah. I'm, and I, I mean, I guess you could do two 10 foot travel lanes and a, a four or five foot bike lane. Um, that, that would be, yeah, that would be 24 feet, 25 feet. So you might be able to do that. Yeah. That, that, that could be Cause I'm thinking, I mean, I know when I ride there, you know, I think one of the earlier, one of the, I forget the woman's name who commented about going around the lake. I think she's right that most people go in a clockwise motion. Um, so I would think that would be a pretty, that's a pretty valuable connection going around the lake. Yeah. And I'd rather have that bike lane in the southbound direction because it allows, you know, people that are not going around the lake that are, you know, going to Reading or from Reading to or from Reading that, that, that can go in the southbound direction on the, that opposite side of the road 
and have the northbound travel on the path itself. Well, our site, so is that a, it sounds like that's a no. That's what I'd recommend is that, that there would be a bike lane on the, if there's, if you're able to put a bike lane on the road, you could probably squeeze in one a bike lane in one direction. I'd recommend that on the southbound direction of the roadway and allow the northbound cyclists in the shared use path in the direction of travel that everyone is, is traveling in. Um, well, I think, I think I'd like to just, uh, I'd like to advocate we look at that again, because I think if you did a bike count of which, which direction they're traveling in, I think you're going to find more cyclists going northbound than southbound coming from Reading. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be the case currently, but we're also looking at, again, having better connections to Reading and, and having a, more of a transportation element in addition to the, the, the more recreational, you know, around the lake. Uh, you know, loop. So th again, this is looking at building out a network that will extend beyond, you know, that, that, that recreational loop around the lake. So would the town be willing to look at narrowing those travel lanes to put a bike lane in there on the northbound direction? Is that, is that something that within the, in the recommendations of the plan, is that reasonable? I mean, we can definitely take another look at it. Um, this, I, I did ask David to, to look at your, rec your your request. I mean, that's for sure. So this is the recommendation that we have today. Um, we can sharpen the pencil and give it another once over. I don't have a problem with that. Right. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great plan. And I think, you know, since the lake is such a centerpiece of uh, recreation and travel, um, I'd hate to see a missed opportunity like that. Sure. Um, and I guess I have my same comment on the, on the main street side. Mm -hmm. um, it's great having the, uh, I'm looking at uh, the reconfigured uh, diagram there. I think it's figure 11. Um, I think it's great having the wider sidewalk for all the reasons that you've cited in the plan. Um, but again, a lot of, uh, I think you're gonna potentially create some conflicts with faster cyclists versus pedestrians, um, even with that beautiful new 12 foot sidewalk there. Um, and that's just from my, my personal experience of riding around the lake at different times of the day. Which is again, why recommending that, that northbound bike lane um, so that there's not the minimizes cyclists going in the opposite direction around the lake on the path, that the cyclists that are on the lake are going in the direction of, of people traveling. Um, but I, you know, I, th I think, you know, I, I you know, that's my opinion, your opinion, neither is wrong or right. It's, it's just, I, I think in, in the design process for this, you know, that, that can be, you know, discussed further and, and weighing the pros and cons. So, right. you know, what we recommend is not, it, it's more that you have that process to have that conversation. And this is the plan, right. not the design. So. Right. And what my last question would be is um, connecting Main Street and Greenwood. Um, I know we, on a couple of our walkthrough, we didn't get a chance to do a walkthrough of the Greenwood section of, of Main Street. Um, but I'd, I'd advocate we put something in the plan as at least a placeholder to talk about, um, you know, what we can do in that, uh, you know, that tough section that's from, you know, just below the, uh, the commuter rail stop to the Melrose town line. So on, the, on our Greenway plan, we're looking at um, paralleling Main Street and focusing on Myrtle to Cooper um, and some of the back streets that, that are parallel to, to, to Main Street uh, because of the challenges of Main Street itself um, as, 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 as like a signed route, essentially. Um, Anything else, John? Um, well, I just wouldn't want Main Street to get overlooked because I live on Main Street, been here 20 years, and I know riding a bike on there is a uh, is an interesting experience. Um, and I think with a, some design, I think to some of the pedestrian recommendations and the bike recommendations, you could slow the speed down through there. I know we had that traffic fatality there about a year ago, right in front of the post office. Um, and it's a it's a busy, congested stretch. And that's that's my last comment. Thanks for thanks for the time. Well, again, I think it's a trade-off of, you know, there's parking on both sides of the street. So and if you're going to keep parking on both sides of the street, then, then there's no room for bike lanes. So, 
Well, I'm just wondering if we yeah. could do a, a shared lane, you know, drop the speed down there to 25 miles per hour and some, I've seen some other designs with green striping so that cars are, uh, cars, car drivers recognize there's going to be bikes in that shared travel path, particularly with the amount of trucking you get on Main Street too. All right, thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Um, this is great. Lots of hands still. All right. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have time for our breakout session, um, but this is wonderful. Um, so next I have John Freeman. Hello. Hi, John. Yep, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah, I'm a frequent visitor. I'm calling in as a resident, but I actually work for MassDOT. Um, and um, it's actually on uh, emailed uh, Bill about that flashing green, uh, red, yellow signal that I'm hoping to get in an auction. But besides that, um, on North Ave, I wanted to say that in terms of the parking, removing it, I think it's a great idea to remove it. Would you consider possibly having an underground parking garage by the gazebo like they have on Boston Common? So it wouldn't ruin the view, but it would provide functionality. You have to take the trees out to do that. No, that, that wouldn't. No, no, we I don't. We wouldn't be able to do that because of water table, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, the, the Boston Common. I mean, that that it's a lot higher than 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 um, the rest of the area, you know, around it. So you actually have you're well above that water table there. Okay. Yeah. I know there's an existing garage closer to I-95, uh, but I think it's commercial. Existing garage near right now. Yeah, I think he's talking about 100 Quanta Pallet um, by the yes. uh, office building. Yeah, that's privately owned. They have a gate up. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's the, the, the employee and there. Yeah, and it's also above ground too. So, yeah. Yeah, and also um, as far as the intersection of Lowell Street and Main Street by the gingerbread house, I know exactly what Judy was talking about earlier. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that met signal warrants that stop control T intersection between yep. pedestrians and vehicles. Mm -hmm. I, I don't disagree. Has that been evaluated before? It has not. No. So like I, I, I was speaking to earlier is that we do have a, um, a developer contribution with an intent to spend some money in that area. So um, that's something that we will be evaluating in the future. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, John. Um, all right. Uh, next, I see Jane Wagner. You have your hand up. You want to? I don't know if you're muted. I can't. Um, Can you hear me now? Yep, you're good. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. um, so I have not been part of these discussions before, but um, and I'm not a biker, but I walk a lot. And um, my ears perked up when you mentioned the bike path going up Byron Street to Jordan Ave. Did I hear that right? Um, oh, so you're talking about, and David, maybe you want to, we can pull up that map um, again. So that has to do with um, the Mystic, I'm sorry, I'm going to mess up the name. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be an actual physical path. It would be a shared use with the, um, with the street. But I don't know, David, if you want to pull up the slides, we can get a better, or Jessica, someone? Anyone? See if I can pull it up. But go ahead, why don't you um, ask your question? Yeah, so the question is, um, I just found out last week that there is a plan to put sidewalks in here. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gonna take two trees in front of my house and we can't even park two cars on either side. So we're gonna have new sidewalks. They're gonna take part of the street, I think, to make more, to make sidewalks continuous on one side. Unfortunately, it's my side of the street. So I lose two really large trees in front of my house. And now there's gonna be bike people coming through. It's a really little street. This is the first time I've heard of it. So 
I don't think it's going through Byron. I don't know if you can zoom in there. He's um, Byron to, to Jordan, and that's exactly where I live. He said he might have been mistaken in, in what he said. Um, so we're trying to pull up right now exactly the path that it goes. Um, I believe it goes up Chestnut. I can't see that close, sorry. Well, I could follow up with somebody afterward because I just found out last week that they're removing two trees in front of my house. And if I'm going to have a bike path in front of it, um, uh, that's concerning. And Jane, it, and just to uh, note, uh, and I don't mean to, uh, it's not, it's not a, a bike path, but people are going to be connecting to a proper bike path up Byron and on to Jordan. That's what I understood somebody to say. Um, the streets, I, I'm not able to pull up the, the our, our other map that that's clearly identifies it, but it's, it would be, um, I think it's Gould Street. Sorry, Gould to Emerson. It may not be, but the, the, but the but the point is, as others have mentioned, it's it's not. Um, it would not. I understand. Know, side, sidewalks are a separate process, but it would not be changing the street or eliminating parking or or changing. It would just be signage that would say, you know, that you're sharing the road with more more cyclists. That's all. David, sorry to unmute and butt in, but do you mind if I add some clarification? To the streets there. Sure. Is that okay. Uh, my name is Bill Spaulding. I'm on the planning board. I'm not speaking for the planning board. I'm on safe streets. I'm not speaking for safe streets. But my daily commute is Gould, up Byron, Jordan, Fox, out through Stoneham, through the cemetery, down um, Elm, and connecting to the um, Tri Community Trail. Um, so that's my back and forth. Um, and, and just to make sense of this whole uh, part to it, I don't believe any of the paths that it will be connecting, they won't really be paths. They would just be on street. So the bikers just share the road. I don't think they'll be taking up any paths and, or there's any plans for that. I just wanted to, I, I, could, I could see where this was going. I just wanted to really um, hopefully make some sense of it. Yeah, I think I understood it wouldn't be a proper bike path, but I guess my point is that, you know, in a week, I found out that the street that I've lived on for 20 years is going to, you know, be significant, at least the block that I'm on will be significantly different over the coming years. And we've got traffic right now being rerouted because of the work that's being done down on Albion Street. I mean, we've lived for two years with the Broadway shut. Now we're living for almost a year with the Albion Street stuff. And now I'm gonna have a bike path, no trees. And the speed with which people are going through these neighborhoods is alarming. I mean, we had an accident on the street a couple of days ago and I've called the police a couple of times. It's just the traffic, the street doesn't really accommodate the, the traffic we've got now, let alone with bikers coming through. I'm sorry, I just found out about this. This is a lot to take in in a week. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Jan, uh, for your comment. Um, I don't know if anyone has an answer, but we appreciate your feedback and um, maybe some clarification yeah. offline. Um, yeah, Jan, I'm happy, I'm happy to discuss it with you. Please, we can we can definitely discuss this. How do I get in touch with you, Bill? Um, through the main engineering number. Uh, okay. My info is all on the website, so you can get yeah. a hold of me through there, right? Okay, I got, and thank you. I got your name and your notes, so I'll make sure that that comes to me. Thank you. No problem. All right. So next, um, we have Paul Sanford, if you want to. Yes, um, hello. Speaking of various modes of transport sharing the same lane, what are the specific traffic calming strategies that you intend to implement in order to keep both pedestrian and cyclists safe and their specific locations as well? I don't know. Yeah. MAPC, your recommendations or? I would say that there is a, I have to kick it to Bill, but there is a process for traffic calming in the city that goes to the traffic 
advisory committee, right? Yeah. Yep, correct. So we have, so we have a policy where we evaluate, you know, a, a bunch of different items. Um, and we so we have a traffic calming policy that lays out the process for for requesting traffic calming um, and essentially the steps that we do to to um, to look at it. We don't just blindly uh, implement. We you know to do a good amount of data collection to determine, you know, first if there the perceived problem is a is a problem uh, first. Second. Um, we look at either directed patrol or you know some type of signage thing first. If that doesn't work, then we look to implement something of, of more of a structural, um, you know, modification to the street. Obviously, there's cost to all of these, so we have to work it all within our capital budget and whatnot. Um, but that's basically what you're seeing with Green Street right now. That's that's one of the the examples of us looking to you know um, by making the road more serpentine, we're able to actually control speeds a little bit better, um, modifying kind of how the, all the intersection works, looking at the pedestrian and, um, you know, the, um, the you know, essentially the, the traffic and how that all works together. So, um, and that all started up through a, through a request through the traffic advisory committee. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. Um, thanks, Paul. Um, next, we have Maureen. You want to unmute yourself? There we go. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I live on Nahan Street, and I'd like to know, is anything going to be done there? I have a couple of issues. As you know, it's a curvy, winding road with a 20, I said two zero miles per hour speed limit which I've seen posted on a telephone pole near Stark Avenue. If there is another, if there's another posted speed limit and there may well be near Perform Street, I, I can't, I'm guessing it would say 20 also, but all I know is I live closer to Stark. I doubt anyone drives 20 miles an hour. I've lived here over five years and it's unlikely that anyone's gone down the street at 20 miles an hour. I would guess, and I'm not a, I don't know, I'm not an expert on the speed of cars, but I would guess that most people go down this at 35 miles per hour or more. Um, the drivers, I mean, is there any way, number one, to do a test to see how fast drivers are going? I know those pieces of equipment do exist. Um, also, there needs to be, like I said, there needs to be lower posted speed limits, maybe one of those flashing signs that the posted speed limit is 20 and you're going 35 like they do on Farm Street by the high school, because they're going way too fast on this road. It is a curvy, windy road. And considering it's called Nahant, but it might as well be North Avenue because people are going straight down. It, it's crazy. Uh, also the sidewalks on this street, on the even side, there appear to be sidewalks for the most part. There are actual sidewalks, which I don't particularly care for, but that's neither here nor there. But on the odd side of Nahant Street, there are little to any sidewalks from what I could tell. Yep, that's and, correct. Okay. Yep. I also believe there are, all, I also have seen, at least on the Farm Street side, if I'm going down Farm and turning left into Nahant, something to do with uh, a weight limit on trucks. There are trucks coming down this road at least once or twice a day. I see them if I happen to be home. Some Maureen, of them might be going to the waste site, but I don't think all of them are. Maureen, if I can, I, and I, I hate to interrupt you, but so we're talking about bike and pedestrian issues or and, and basically those items. So if we want to maybe take to the sidewalk piece, I can talk to that. Okay. And then the speed issues and all those things you're talking about, that's all traffic advisory committee. Um, and you can get information. There's a, a traffic advisory committee website that has uh, basically the process for discussing all these things with us. Um, and, you know, we would do that data collection. Basically, it's the same response I just had for Paul a few minutes ago. Um, and that's how we evaluate it. So we look and evaluate to see what the traffic is actually going. Then we look to implement a myriad of different things if it makes sense. So that's the process for all of those items. But for the sidewalk piece, this was actually identified through a safe routes to school audit that we did within the last year or so. And MAPC has actually included a, a sidewalk component on Nahant as part of this project. So I think you were saying the odd side's the one that doesn't have the sidewalks, the section that doesn't. 
right? Well, With a, from what I could tell, they may yeah. on some, but for the most part, I don't see any on the odd side. Yep. And so what we're looking to do is at some point, the project would be essentially connecting the, the neighborhoods that come off of that um, side. So there's a series of like three streets, I believe. I want to say it's three. All of those would basically be dovetailed to one location to get them across the street safely. Right now where we have that crosswalk, because just the site distances are good. So that's a project that's actually included within this plan and something that we would look to implement. So, so the, there are some crosswalks. Will they be restriped and additional yes. ones be put on? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's all. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, we can follow up um, since this has been brought up with uh, the presentation, um, this um, recording, and we can possibly include some information about the traffic advisory committee because there's a few concerns tonight have been more directed towards them. So we can make that a little easier for everyone. Um, next up, I'm so sorry, I'm going to probably pronounce your name wrong. Oh, okay. You, you turned your screen on. Thank yeah, you. No worries. I didn't want to. Yeah, I don't have. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for organizing it. And I know it's been a couple of years and uh, you guys taking it slow and with the communications, with the design process and uh, taking in all the feedbacks. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, just wanted to pass that along and keeping it clear and uh, open. Uh, with that, uh, actually, let me see. I'd like to share, but uh, oh, I can share. So. Um, Two questions. One, um, no, uh, on the dirt, in the downtown area, I saw one of the original plans of Envision slash bike path design, and uh, it in that uh, the plan was to cut almost all the trees in downtown, those like by the shops, and that was like a couple of years back, maybe two years ago. Is that still the plan? To like we didn't mention that. I don't know if this is like. It is in the scope of this meeting, but uh, it was related to making space for a bike path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that that is the current plan, but I, I wouldn't say cutting down most of the trees. They tried to salvage them within, you know, where they could. Um, that was definitely part of the plan. So I like the ones I believe the ones in front of the library were, were identified to remain the certain pieces that had to go just because of how the shifting of the road was going to happen. Um, so the proposed plan for those who haven't looked at it basically widens out the sidewalks within downtown and also adds a bike lane in either direction. Um, and then also looks at modifications to some of the parking um, as part of all of that. So um, in some of those areas, we have, you know, what we called an amenity strip where we were able to put either benches or we could put in, um, we could put in trees, we could put in, uh, you know, pavers. And this would help to potentially enhance, you know, your your separation between the 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 parking and the you know the roadway and the the, the basically the businesses that are that are adjacent to it. So um, yeah, so the, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, I'm I'm familiar. I just wanted to see if that is, that has changed. I, I quickly I couldn't uh, get uh, reach to that. The reason I was asking is. Uh, and the new plan was basically, I think this is the, for across the street from library, that strip. Mm -hmm. That seemed like all the trees there are kind of going, but then we are replanting trees about six feet, four to six feet towards mm -hmm. the road. Basically, the trees are being a barrier between the bike path, pedestrian, you know, the walk path, trees, and then the cars. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I wanted to kind of, you guys probably thought about it too, but uh, from my past experience, I was in a town that redid their downtown and cut pretty much all the trees and replanted trees. But, you know, uh, there was like about 50 years in the trees and the downtown was pretty high for quite a while for mm -hmm. next generation or so. Um, so uh, that I, I want to bring that up. One idea could be is to like in Cambridge, they have a bike path. There's parking spots, bike path and trees on the walk path. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if we have to cut the trees is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to leave it to you guys. Uh, you, you, you know, 
um, you are the professionals, but um, there are other cities that chose not to cut the trees. And because like the plan was cut the tree and then plant new uh, trees like four feet to the left if you are walking up towards the lake. Um, so uh, just wanted to point that out. Uh, so that's one, the first one. Uh, the second one is I saw that a, uh, there's a plan for further up north, so I'm uh, moving up Lake Kuwano and Powett. Um, you mentioned that the uh, Kuwano Powett Parkway, there's a widening plan for that, which is which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any plan for the path, you know, around or in front of Converse building? Yep. I know it's probably like private uh, or yep. if there, there is. was it. There is, okay. Yep, there I is. Might have there's missed. actually two paths. There's, there's, there's one that's there that's closer to the lake. That will remain, and then um, as part of the the project, they included on their property a uh, essentially an easement for the town that would allow for like a boardwalk pathway combination. So it goes through some of their stormwater structures. It'll be a really nice amenity, I think, for the for the town when it's all complete. So that is definitely included as part of that project. Okay, that's great. And uh, um, lastly, I saw the new bike path uh, somewhere by the Mill River going up. I, I think it is being opened, uh, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, that's great, just wanted to pass that. And thank you, that's all uh, okay. I wanted to mention. Great, thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you, Gunnar. Uh, Kathy? Hi, I just wanted to um, bring up a concern I have as far as um, sidewalks in particular, but bike, pathways as well. Um, a lot of the town's focus seems to be for recreation. A lot of the energy seems to be focused around the lake. And I think it would be great to focus more on some of the roadways that lead to schools as well as public transportation, especially as we continue to build more and more multi-unit housing buildings, um, people who are encouraged to take public transportation that there needs to be better access. Um, sidewalks and crosswalks need better maintenance. Um, and even things like not allowing cars to park on the sidewalk, because not only does that obstruct pedestrians, but it also degrades the sidewalks a lot faster and making them unsafe for pedestrians. It's also not safe when you're a person walking that you have to walk out into the street to get around a car that is parked on the sidewalk. And I see it in on multiple streets and in different neighborhoods that because people have so many cars and they don't have driveways that they're parking their cars on the sidewalk. There's also an issue in the winter time um, on how long it takes for sidewalks, again, that are leading to schools and public transportation for those sidewalks to be cleared. Um, at times, Water Street takes five days to be cleared after snow, but the pathway around the lake gets cleared the next morning. Um, and it just seems, you know, it doesn't make sense for kids trying to get to school, for people trying to walk to the T, trying to walk to the bus stop, that they can't get there, but you can go and walk around the lake on a clear sidewalk. So. Mm -hmm. Those things have been frustrating. A lot of things I know have already been covered. I didn't hear in the MAPC presentation about the Nahant Street area, but that is definitely a concern that some of the sidewalks are um, unsafe to pedestrians because there is no curbstone. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that, that that will be looked at and fixed um, because it is pretty scary. Lots of high school kids walk down that street um, as well as just your typical pedestrians out either walking for exercise or walking to the train station that gets a little scary around the curve. Um, I don't know the house numbers there. I think it's around the 200s after um, the pit if you are headed towards Main Street. Okay. So um, just to make sure I got everything. So you were talking about the, so curbing on the Han Street, the where we're missing portions of it, where we have sidewalk existing, right? 
Is that Correct. what you were saying? All right, just to make sure I understood that. So maintenance, um, we actually, I'm actually in the process now of doing a full townwide assessment of our, of our sidewalks uh, condition-wise that'll be rolled into a new capital plan. Uh, similar to what we do with the roads um, that we got passed a couple of years ago, um, basically kind of taking the same the same thought process. So evaluating conditions and then developing essentially what we need as an annual budget to make, be able to maintain these. So uh, I'm in the process of, of, of discussing deliverables with my consultant on that in the next like month or so. Uh, I'll have a meeting with them tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So, so that is a priority for us and something that we're looking to basically put some money towards and that will be a plan um, within the year for sure uh, to improve our sidewalk maintenance. So that's definitely happening. Uh, parking on the sidewalk though, that would be a traffic advisory piece for us to evaluate there. And um, you know, so we can either reach out through there if there's specific areas you wanna identify, you can also fire me an email on those too. Um, and we can push it to the, to the police department to look and evaluate if that's something that we can address with signage or something that we can address with enforcement. And then as for the snow, um, so where in, on Water Street were you referring to that? Because I'm a member of Public Works, so obviously I can talk to the director about that. Um, Water Street from the center of town down to Farm Street. Oh, wow, all right. Okay. These are the sidewalks. But Bill, if I may be mistaken, is that the responsibility of the commercial or multifamily owner to clear it depends, those sidewalks? Yeah, and, and so what could be happening there that you're looking at a, a combination where we have, you know, and anything that is is not residential, and by residential single family residence, then uh, that's the responsibility is actually the um, is actually the the person that fronts on the sidewalk to maintain that and to shovel that off. So after the have, after the business zone from roughly Spring Ave or Butler Ave, that area down to Farm Street, which is mostly residential homes. Yep. So it, that would be something that the, the public works would take care of. So, you know, it could be something related to just not prioritizing that. I'm not sure, but let me evaluate that. I think it's a good point though, because obviously folks that want to walk to the high school, um, that would be a, that would pretty much be the way to go. Right. So <laughs> they think yeah. they need to have that happen. So. And a, another issue in that area is actually those commercial business owners that hire plow drivers mm -hmm. that actually plow their snow onto the sidewalk. Right. No, I'm not it's, Yep. Horrible. Yeah. And we, we have a bylaw that addresses that. So there, there's a process for that if, if that's ongoing. So we just need to know about it and obviously we'll address it. Um, so I appreciate the feedback and, and, you know, I'll talk to the director about this for, for at least for the upcoming winter for sure. And so I did just quickly pull up the website for the traffic advisory committee. Um, it says that meetings are on an as needed basis. Do you have any idea if if there's one coming up or yeah so typically what we do is we wait for a few items to come on so we don't just do one for one item um, there's usually a handful of items that we're dealing with so right now one of the discussions is about the the new um the new uh tech school in in that um that project they have some stuff before us that uh is going to be coming back soon i've heard a bunch of items today so um depending on how those trickle in we could look to have something in august um or potentially september um, our, right now, our chair, I, I'm actually the vice chair, I guess, or <laughs> so the chair is the um, is our traffic safety officer with, the, with um, Wakefield Police. He is on a, um, a training sabbatical until September. So um, I can coordinate one if it's if it's something that's urgent. Uh, otherwise, we would wait until September for him to be back. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Kathy. Um, next up, I have Bill Spalding. Thank you, and I appreciate all the work that so many people have brought into this and being part of this process um, has really been eye-opening for me and helped me understand more. And to um, Kathy took a lot of what I wanted to add, really focusing on um, the safe routes to streets at, from street, uh, to schools. To me, that becomes the most important thing. Uh, we all know what the traffic is like getting across Wakefield, whether you have a student at the high school or another school and how that works, if we can really, really make a priority of safe paths for students to roll. And I know um, that's part of this plan. Um, the, com the commuter rail stops too as well. Uh, I think what might be missing is where do we put the bikes once we get there? Where do we put and lock things up? Is there any way to have a shed and overhead storage. This is happening in so many places. 
Um, I, I think we're a little bit behind on that. Maybe it was overlooked. I can't remember it being discussed so much, but um, I, I would really like that to get into the plan where in different locations, maybe on side streets off of Maine, at the commuter rail stop um, in different places to really have some type of lockable bike storage. And it, it doesn't have to be so sophisticated, something overhead, helping with the elements, but to, to lock up bikes properly. No, Bill, I think you brought this up at one of the other meetings as well. So yeah. that was something that, that we tasked MAPC with looking at, and yeah. um, it was in our comments going back. So that's in the queue. Um, that will be part of okay. this plan sure. And there Sorry is one, if I missed that in the plan. Okay. No, I, I think it was just, it might have been like a sentence or something. So, uh, mm -hmm. but the um, we also do have one as part of the 200 Quinnipaua project. So that has one that's included. So, um, you know, it's something that we'll definitely include. And in, we're also looking at one at um, across from the Galvin in that, um, you know, that little park area that will be the terminus of the rail to trail. So, yeah, we, we do need to have a more robust discussion of bike racks in, in, in the plan. So that, that is something that is missing. Um, now, obviously, the, on the T property, it's, it's T, and, and of course, the stations are not accessible. So that's another issue. Um, you know, so it, there's, and, and, and the one behind the bank is kind of hidden. So, right. Yeah. And, and I don't, um, I don't want to sound like an ass about cars versus this and all that. But I mean, it's, it was only two generations ago that there were no cars on the streets, uh, maybe three, but it's just like, it, it was a walking town. It was how you got around. Um, and I, to just channel Jane Jacobs, paraphrase wise, you know, the automobile has really been that destroyer of most American communities. Um, just recently, I was down in Richmond, Virginia for a lacrosse tournament uh, for my daughter who's at the high school. And I noticed we were just 20 minutes outside of Richmond. There were no crosswalks, no way, no sidewalks. You couldn't even walk to go to Dunks to get anything from the hotel we were staying in. It was just, I really feel our community is so far ahead of a lot of places around. And I, I just really appreciate all this input tonight and everything else going on. I, I just, it's so exciting. Thank you. All right, I think we have one more hand and we're at 8.40. Um, Patrick, um, I know you had your hand up earlier. I mean, no. Hi there, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome, sorry about that. Uh, real quick. So uh, I want to reiterate what uh, Ashley said towards the start of the meeting um, had that uh, sort of that dangerous road down um, from the new sort of apartment building that's being built. Uh, I also live on Hopkins Street and I really find myself walking to uh, Reading a lot more. I like to go for walks and that curve uh, just over 95 is uh, uh, worrisome every time we cross over and there's a uh, call it a desired path along the uh, <laughs> the neighbors sort of front lawns there so uh, I know it's really steep and that makes uh, you know building things difficult there's only so much money to go around but given that there's going to be you know a couple extra hundred people there um, from the town uh, Wakefield's perspective um, having been to both Wakefield and Reading downtown uh, we just moved into the area pretty recently uh, Wakefield is a lot nicer than Reading, uh, but I find myself sort of going to Reading just because I don't want to go along that one curve. Um, and that's just me walking. Uh, but the, the other thing I wanted to say was more of a general comment. Um, I have recently, uh, I was born and raised on the Cape, so I'm not really, you know, any building over three stories to me is a skyscraper. Uh, but coming here and um, it's, it's really, really encouraging as a, uh, a younger person who is looking to start a family soon. Um, when I read through that town plan, I went, oh, great, awesome. This is where I want to raise my kids, something like this. So that is really, really encouraging to see. Um, given all the other places I've lived, uh, I spent a little bit of time in Greece while I was um, in college. I was lucky enough to study abroad in Thessaloniki, and uh, they have a really thriving sort of uh, bus uh, infrastructure, and I really loved it, but couldn't quite put my finger on it, and after many hours of not just bikes on YouTube uh, <laughs> and other sort of YouTube videos explaining why uh, counterintuitively, you know, reducing traffic uh, really stems from 
it can look like town planners are just trying to make life miserable for people that drive cars, but actually the net effect is really positive for the, the entire community, even those who do drive because counterintuitively, you know, uh, widening roads can lead to increased traffic times. And I've really dove into a lot of that planning. Uh, I'm an engineer, I hate not knowing how things work. And uh, once I saw sort of the uh, truth of uh, to what the previous person was just saying about, oh, my God, we've destroyed our cities by <laughs> letting cars take hold of everything. Uh, this is really, really encouraging to see. So uh, as a 20 something who just pretty recently in the last year moved to Wakefield, I wanted to say thank you all. Um, this is really encouraging to see, except seeing things like fiscal year 26 expected. That's a little upsetting, but <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, That'll uh, come <laughs> eventually. But yeah, I just wanted to put uh, that recommendation in towards having uh, some sort of sidewalk at some point along that stretch of road, especially since uh, there's a whole new apartment building getting built right next to our building uh, that's going to have, I wanna say 400 something extra units. Um, and uh, oh, the one other uh, question I had, I'm not sure if this road is Wakefield in, or Reading since we're right on that line, but um, South Street uh, that goes from um, Hopkins Street, it sort of crosses over onto Route 128, I believe. I'm not sure if that's a Reading Road or a Wakefield Road, but uh, that is uh, a another one that could uh, <laughs> really use a sidewalk. Uh, it's from the apartment buildings to that uh, Claresso's farm stand, mm -hmm. but not sure if that's under your purview. Yeah, we, we have a, basically the first two houses on the left. Once you get past that, it's all Reading. So we have a small section. That's that's way. Ah, cool. Understood. That would not be a very long sidewalk then. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, it, it wouldn't go far. <laughs> OK, well, uh, thank you very much. And that's uh, that's all I have. Great, that is the last hand I'm seeing right now. Um, I know we still have 32 people online, which is really great. Um, we really appreciate everyone's participation. Um, I, I, I know I wanna be sensitive of everyone's time too. Um, so I don't, I'm kind of lost if we wanted to a quick breakout session, I'll kind of open it up to Bill, Jessica, David, or I'll kind of do a, a view like I did last time. Do we wanna do like a five to 10 minute breakout? Shake your head yes or no, you're good. We'll have them raise their hand if they want to raise their yeah, hand. Yeah, that's a great idea. A yeah. If you want to do a good idea. I wasn't going to do that earlier because people had their actual hands raised. So yeah, if you want to raise your hand, if you're interested, I'll give it like 30 seconds to do a breakout room. The raise the hand is at the bottom. So far, I'm seeing one. And again, if there's certain things that you wanted to talk about and we didn't discuss tonight with about the plan, me and Bill, David, Jessica are, are here to answer any questions through email. Um, we'll follow up with a, uh, an email ourselves with this information. Um, so I'm not seeing any hands, which I think that was a really great large breakout room we just had. So thank you very much. And I'm going to hand it back over to MAPC. Well, thank you all for your wonderful comments, and and you know we've taken note of all those, and 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 we'll be making some changes and additions to the plan. Um, Jessica, your, maybe yeah, your closing just, comments. <laughs> I would just say thank you all so much for your positive feedback, and also some of the important um, areas that we might have missed. So I'm excited to jump in with David and address those comments. So thank you um, for your time today. Also, thank you, Aaron, our wonderful facilitator. Thanks for monitoring and taking all the questions. I appreciate it. That job was easy. I didn't answer many of them. I'll thank you guys for answering all the questions. So <laughs> I just called on hands. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I don't know if anyone else still, if you have anything else you'd like to add. No, I just think it's great. Everyone's, you know, uh, coming out to, to provide their comments. I mean, this is a plan for Wakefield. You folks are all our Wakefield. So just, um, Stay in touch. Um, we have an email distribution list that we've been using for the project. We'll hit folks up on developments as we get through that. And um, you know, at some point, I think we're looking within the next month or so to go to the council to look for an adoption of the plan. Um, you know, if you have specific comments that you want to that, that come to you after this, feel free to reach out to 
to either Aaron or myself. Um, you can also email us. Our information is all on the town website. And I think that's about all I have. So I, I have a shameless plug for <laughs> Safe Street it's Sunday. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's a good one. So, July yes. 17th, the Sunday, 12 to 4 p.m. Come by the lake and walk and roll and run with us. And um, we can't help the weather. So who knows what's going to happen? So you want to just uh, explain what exactly is happening just so people know they'll be uh sure well on the on the common lower common um the police department will be there to help with helmet fitting and handing out some helmets and and john uh please correct me if i'm um speaking out of on this um a full lane of main street and church street will be open and um provided with physical barriers of some sort to help um allow people to roll walk stroll whatever they want to do around the lake Church Street as well. So um, we're hoping we get a good turnout. That way we can plan more of these. Uh, there'll also be a bike rodeo put on by some outside people coming in that do this. Um, I can't remember, Judy, what's the company or the people they're with, but they they do these uh, bike rodeos for kids and they- Mass get on bike bikes is coming in. Thank you, thank you. Like, I need oh. dinner. <laughs> uh, so yeah, John, anything to add? Um, the only other thing I would add is just a, a bill I'd sent uh, you and the, the internal planning committee a question a couple days ago about the North Ave signage. So maybe you can take a look at that with the other sure. Sure. planners and and uh, respond to that question. Yeah, I don't time. recall seeing that, but I'll, let me I'll, I'll go back through. Yeah, it was about the traffic cone markings on North Ave for the event. OK, sure. I'll talk to the folks on that. Sounds good. But Bill, I think you nailed the advertisement and you look like a baseball referee. Baseball well, yeah, I, I had a softball game. We we had a, a game on the Boston Common tonight, so it went a little late. I just made it for the back to work for this. So I'll be getting on my bike and biking back to Wakefield. So please watch out for bikers on the road. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks, well, thank, Bill. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, again. Appreciate your time. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. And again, just stay tuned to our website. I'm just going to do a plug about this because a lot of people don't know this. You can subscribe to the news and announcements on the town's website, and you'll get information about events like this, master plan meetings, um, any other further planning meetings that we're doing uh, through the town. So uh, I think that's a great thing to be part of. So with that being said, I want to thank everyone and have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.